Right. Um, so thank you so much for bringing me here. So it's a great honor here to uh, share with you some of my understanding about the uh, genome editing tools. So my part will uh, focus more on the tools and applications. So some of the points uh, that the Gao actually mentioned, I will try to illustrate uh, a little bit more. But uh, I'll, I'll try to also share with you some of the new uh, applications and tools available in the area. So to begin with, okay, so um, we all learn to use different tools to do things. Like uh, we learn to use scissors when we were, were young to, to make artwork. We use pencils to write uh, rubbers to erase things. And then we correct things. But then if we are to try editing DNA, so this simple tool doesn't really work, right? We need more sophisticated ones. So the questions come then is where do we find the tools? So where do they come from? So from Donald Gao's um, um, presentation, you got a clue that there is actually genome editing tools inside your yogurt, right? And we all know now it is the CRISPR. So what's actually in there? You know now? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, it is the bacteria, which is armed with the natural immune system called CRISPR. So they are added there because they want to fight the uh, um, viruses that is always uh, uh, somehow get into your yogurt to cause the contamination. So the food industry want to eliminate those by adding bacteria. But in the early days when they do that, they didn't really know about CRISPR. They just know that there's some kind of immune system in the bacteria that can serve the purpose. But later on, um, with more researchers that go, uh, Dr. Gao actually mentioned, they work out the specifics and learn that it is really the CRISPR systems that target the virus DNA, uh, make a cut, and kill them. All right? So with that, uh, it is very important, uh, and it's also a very interesting uh, um, observation that leads to the next important questions, which is whether you can uh, use these tools, transfer them into other species to make it work. All right. So initially, people may think this is very weird because it's a bacterial immune system. If you transfer it into a human, for example, why would it work, right? Um, but after the experiments, of course, you learn about uh, a couple uh, uh, minutes ago, it actually works incredibly well across a lot of different species. All right. So one step backwards. So if you think about why, so this tools use the DNA damage and repair systems. And this system is actually quite universal across different species. So as long as you are able to generate a cut with your scissors, then the cells will going to repair and make the edits. So it's not unreasonable to think that now that this system could be widespread uh, or, or, or uh, can be used to successfully a lot of different uh, uh, species. So, and it's also very exciting because it works in, uh, uh, in so many uh, different organisms that opens up a lot of different applications. So here are some examples that uh, if CRISPR can be used in the agricultural uh, biotech area, so you could potentially uh, um, engineer or modify plants that show a better drug resistant feed, uh, characteristics or eliminate the uh, allergic components, for example. So in some develop uh, developing countries, food shortage is really an issue, right? So if you can improve uh, um, uh, the way to grow crops in that area, that will help a lot and save a lot of lives. So this is one potential uh, area of research that people have been trying to explore. So the second one is about understanding biology or behavior, because it has been very hard. So with this uh, gene editing tools, then you can actually act on individual genes and understand what is its implication in different uh, uh, functions. Like if you uh, remove this gene called MC4R in human or even mou uh, or, or mouse, then the mouse actually lacks the cetacean to normal, uh, uh, that will occur uh, while eating. So basically the mouse will eat a lot with those uh, feeling full after even a very big meal. So that could lead to obesity or other issues. So with that, it could promote our understanding um, of biology. So another area of interest is on uh, gene therapy, of course, because 
Uh, there are a lot of different genetic-based diseases, and we, if we can correct the mutated uh, genes back to normal, then of course it would be very helpful. So this is one example where um, um, uh, people having sickle cell diseases have their rabbit cells as uh, having a curved shape, so they can't really hold uh, oxygen that well, and then it can be very deadly, right? So one way is to introduce back some anti-cyclin genes into the producing cells. So now the human being can actually produce new normal cells. And this picture is actually adopted from one of the study uh, that was published like a couple of months ago, which is pre uh, pretty new. So what they did was to use CRISPR to edit the producing cells, the reproducing cells. And before editing, you can see there are a lot of like sickled cells. So they're, they're having an abnormal shape. But after editing, you can see most of them got become normal. So you can see the potential on using these tools in clinics. And this is really uh, 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 cells taken from patients. So another example that I want to show you is uh, this uh, uh, genetically modified mouse. So on the left-hand side is the wild type. On the right-hand side is the mutant, which is crispr edited. So basically, um, uh, if, uh, for a normal mouse, that if you put it on your hand, then it tends to escape, right? They, they may be feeling a little bit nervous, uh, uh, so they escape, so that's normal. But for the mutant, if you put it on mouse, they're quite frightening, so they just stay there. So you may think that this gene may be related to some of the domesticated behaviors, or in some cases, maybe aggressive behavior. So you can control specific genes to control different behaviors to understand better the biology, all right? So um, Dr. mentioned uh, this earlier. So we have three very commonly used tools uh, for gene editing, same finger, uh, talent, and also CRISPR. So they are all uh, programmable. So what do, I mean, what do I mean by programmable? So if you have a particular piece of DNA that you want to target, so basically using these tools, you can design uh, 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 um, specific ones, like same finger, talent, or CRISPR, to target that particular, uh, specifically. So that's the meaning of uh, programmable. But when we talk about program, uh, programming in biology, it's quite different from what we learn from um, 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 computers, let's say. In computers, we know we use the language 010101, right? And then the computer will, will know how to read it and then do their functions or calculations, right? So in biology, we use DNA, the four letters ATCGs. Um, so if we were to edit the DNA, we're going to have the tools to first recognize these patterns, understand the meaning, and then edit it, all right? So for the same fingers, um, they have three, three fingers. So you can see it's three fingers. So each of them grab one nucleotide. And therefore, it actually grabs AAG for this purple one. So for the green one, it grabs GGT. For the uh, uh, um, red one, it grabs ATC. So if you want to target this nine uh, bases of DNA, then you'd stitch together three different same finger domains. And then you can recognize this particular sequence. But this is just for recognition. You didn't really make the cut yet. So therefore, you have to pair it up with a pair of scissors. Okay? So the scissors is called fraud one that I actually introduced. And if you introduced uh, an input to a uh, um, motif of the same fingers linked to this uh, scissors, then you can generate the double strand DNA uh, 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 breaks or the cut here to make the edits by means of leveraging the system, uh, uh, the NHEJ to generate semi-random mutations, or the HDR with the presence of donor vectors, you can have more precise editing. So I'm not going to go through this because I already covered that. But the application here is, uh, with the earlier version of the tools, like same fingers, it already entered the clinical trial to tackle problems like HIV. So um, this is a gene called CCR5 that is known to be expressed on our immune T cells. And they are actually serving as the receptor for HIV, meaning that HIV can recognize this CCR5 and then infect your cells, or infect your immune T cells. So 
Um, and also, uh, 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 there are actually normal human beings that carry mutations in this CCL5 genes and prevent them and protect them from HIV infections. So the idea here is, if one use single finger to target and destroy this CCL5 genes in human beings, they could potentially save or, or, or protect the human from being infected by HIV. And it turns out that in the clinical trial, it works quite well. So that actually um, further uh, uh, underscored the potential of how these tools could be used in the clinic. So the second tool is called uh, Talon, so you know. Um, so this is actually quite similar to same fingers, uh, except that it has a one base resolution of recognition. So meaning that here is uh, 18 bases of uh, uh, DNA letters, okay? So what you, want to, you need to do is to have 18 different, or about 18 different blocks of uh, Legos, for example, stitch them together. So let's say the green one recognizes the T, a blue one recognizes the C, and then red one recognizes the A, etc. So you can put together specific Lego blocks in uh, um, specific, specific sequences, and then you can target whatever sequence that you, you want to. Okay? So, um, and very similar, you need to bring the CCS as well uh, to this uh, design point of cutting, and then you do the, do, do the cuts. So, so with same finger and talons, it's like if you want to travel or, or, or uh, target one DNA or go to one station, like in Hong Kong, then you can design a same finger or a talon that can go here and do the cuts. All right? But imagine if you want to go to Europe or you could go to the US, then you basically need to design another plane or another flight, right? So this flight can't go to U uh, US, this flight can't go to Europe. So it seems a little bit more challenging uh, uh, to, to do editing at many different sites or areas, right? So what you really want is a generic plane that can fly everywhere, as long as you give it an address and it can do the job. So it's more easy for uh, genome editing uh, to occur this way. And thanks, for, um, uh, thanks to the development or discovery of the CRISPR system that actually addressed this point. So now, you know, uh, uh, the CRISPR system involved two components, okay? So the first one is the nuclease called Cas9, so which is the pair of scissors, make the cut. And then the second one is the uh, guide RNA, which is the guide uh, to tell where the scissors should cut. So uh, this is the, the address. So if you want to find this uh, nucleotide uh, DNA, so you give this sequence to the uh, guide RNA. And then when they come together, they will find the, 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 the desired uh, um, um, destination, and then generate a cut, and then edit it. So this is how the CRISPR system actually works. So an analogy here is that this is the Cas9 protein. And then we will grab the RNA and read it, and then we will just go there, all right? So now, you have the two, the CRISPR two, to assess the genome. So what you're gonna do, or what you would like to do. So of course, to understand biology, one thing is really to scan through the whole genome, to look at every DNA pieces, to see what are their functions, all right? So you could do this uh, by scanning a lot of different guy RNAs, and then see uh, which ones are good, uh, uh, which ones are bad. And perhaps you can identify some of the anti-cancer genes based on this. And of course, uh, 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 now you have CRISPR, you don't necessarily need to just target one site. You can target multiple sites by giving multiple address to Cas9. So the Cas9 will recognize the sequence, go there and make the cut. So you can do multiple of them at one, uh, at one time inside a single cell. And apart from cutting, you can also see CRISPR as a sweet I mean knife, meaning that originally it has a knife or a scissors that can generate a cut, all right? But then if you don't want it to generate a cut, you can just remove it, add additional parts that can do other functions. So for example, if we want to do um, activation, repression, or base editing, that I'll, uh, I'll talk about in a, in a second, then you actually uh, put in additional parts to make it work or make it targetable to uh, 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 achieve different functions, okay? 
So this is an example on the active vision and repression I just mentioned. So basically, we are not editing or uh, uh, changing the DNA, but we are just inserting a switch, put it on the DNA. So if we want to have this Cas9 protein, the gain RNA, uh, targeting this area and fuse it with a part that can do activation, then we can turn this DNA on. Okay, just put a switch there, turn this on, all right? Or in another way, if you fuse it with a repressing uh, a part, then you can turn it off. So basically, on the switch, you put it off. So you can not, uh, you can not only add the DNA using the conventional one, you can also use this um, derivatives to do the uh, 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 switching on and off the DNA. Okay, so another thing um, is about base editing that Dr. Andrew mentioned. So this is actually important because um, a lot of genetic diseases are actually caused by a single letter change, meaning that if we have the capability to um, restore the original one, the single basis, then it can also save billions of lives, all right? Um, so it's like a rubber that you, you remove or erase this particular A, and then you want to write back a G here. So how it works? So here is uh, a, a um, very simple illustration because the, the, I mean, the real biology is really complicated, but uh, uh, in a simple sense is that uh, this space editor have the uh, Cas9 component that again with the RNA, the address can go to a specific place, but it doesn't really cut. But instead, it has a functional unit that can do a chemical reaction to convert one base to the other. So in this example, it's like A to I, and after repair, the I will be recognized as a G. So basically, it's an A to a G conversion. You would say it that way. This way. Um, so just a basic chemical reaction can actually have to, uh, do the job. And the efficiency is actually much higher. It's like about 50% up to you uh, if you use base editor. But if you want to use the conventional uh, editing tools, then for precise editing like the, the, the HDR-based mechanism, you can just get like 1% to 5% on average. So these tools could be more useful in terms of correcting genetic mutations or single base changes back to normal. Okay, so uh, after we learn about the tools, of course, we are also very concerned about whether they're accurate or not. So, uh, of course, we want, always want to hit the jackpot, right, um, to correct the desired sequence, which is the on target. But sometimes we're also concerned whether it will hit something somewhere else, which we call the off target. And the answer for this particular question is that it seems the CRISPR system or other genome engineering tools are relatively accurate, but there can be some worst case scenarios where if you don't design your system very well, you can generate many, many off-target uh, events. So this is actually the experiment that scientists performed uh, to scan through the genome and where the edits actually occurred. So the green uh, uh, line here indicate the on-target. So it's good that the on-target edit was there, so it was edited. But at the same time, for the red lines here, they also spot a lot of different sites that you don't originally want to target, but it did add it. So it was, if you zoom it in, so these are the, the, the results. So originally you want to target this 20 uh, uh, bases, okay? So the, the square here indicate the intended of on target site. So it's completely matching the sequence, so there's no uh, colored letters, and it works, okay, that's good. But you can see other off-target sites basically have two to five mismatched bases when compared to the design address. So mean that, that meaning that you, uh, uh, even there is a very similar address, you just have several letters write, written wrong, it can still, the letter can still go to that address. So it's a wrong delivery, all right? Um, and you can see in this particular case, even if the two letters are wrong, it actually develops more time than the corrected ones. So I think this is uh, something in, uh, 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 not only in research or if applying this to for clinics, they are very concerned about this because if you target somewhere else, it could be very problematic. So of course, uh, researchers are actively working on improving the system. 
so uh, to increase the uh, to lower down the off-target effects. So the first thing that people have been working on is to pick the good gain RNA, meaning a specific address. So if the address is written very, very clearly, and there's no ambiguity, no sim another similar address, then in theory, you should be able to do the accurate editing, right? Um, so not only in the uh, science area, but uh, uh, institutes, but also like Microsoft, they use AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, to learn the rules of designing kind of RNAs. So which ones are the better address to be used, all right? So another area is to edit the Cas9 protein because there are two components. So either you edit the RNA or the Cas9 protein, right? So um, they also uh, work on this. That uh, this is actually the Cas9 protein how it looks, and the red here is the the DNA. Okay. So basically, the Cas9 protein grab the DNA by means of charges. So you know, positive charge, negative charge, they tend to come together. But if you uh, have two uh, the same charges, they will repel with each other. All right. So if you, uh, people try to modify or uh, control the number of positive charge on the protein, they can actually help uh, to control the on and off target activity. So a lot of research within that hours actually are working on this area as well. Okay, so so far we have been focusing a lot on DNA, but just a, a very short uh, message here is that. Uh, the CRISPR system is not solely for editing DNA. It can also be modified to target RNA. So uh, this, the, I mean, the, the overall mechanism is very similar, but you're not just using the Cas9, but it's relative to Cas13 that you can use the guy RNA the address to target RNA as well. So not necessarily DNA. Okay, so um, for the remaining like 10 minutes, so I will, I will I'll give you uh, another taste of, uh, of the CRISPR by introducing you of some more applications. Okay, the first one is ex vivo uh, editing therapy. So we mentioned about the sickle cell uh, disease um, um, example. So basically from patients, you take out the cells, edit it, put it back, okay? And then you can help pro uh, uh, producing uh, non-mover cells, for example. And it can also work with immune cells as well, and use them to treat cancers, perhaps. So the idea is that uh, for a lot of cancer cells, tumor cells, they're actually very clever. They, ask the t uh, they show the signal of T cells that I'm actually invisible to you. Don't come and kill me, OK? But, uh, the, and the T cells actually believe, right? Um, so the idea here is that if you use CRISPR to remove this receptor called PD-1, and then after editing, you put it back into the, the, the human body. Then basically, the T cell won't read this message uh, anymore. So now, the T cells can go to uh, the cancer cells and kill it. So that is one trick that people have been trying to explore in the area. Um, but that is also still uh, ex vivo based uh, uh, editing. So another way is that uh, to directly introduce these CRISPR components into the human body because some of the cells inside our body is really difficult to extract, add it, and put it back, right? So sometimes we need to directly inject this uh, 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 editing materials or the editing tools into the human body, like the retina or liver, et cetera, to do the precise editing um, uh, 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 on sports. So those are examples on uh, how to use the genome editing tools to directly edit the, the human DNA, for example. To, to help treating diseases. Um, but you could also apply this to, to indirectly cure diseases, like for cases to, um, uh, for organ transplantation. So because we have a very high demand of human organs, but over the case, we don't have enough, right? So to solve this, uh, researchers have been looking for uh, alternatives, like the ones from pigs. So because their organs actually look very similar and function similarly as for those in humans. But the challenge is that um, there are two. The first is that there are genes in the pig genome that could elicit the immune response in our human body. So we just reject the, the, the pig organ directly because the immune response. The second one is the presence of the retroviruses in the pig genome that could be transmitted into humans and cause additional complications. So scientists try to use CRISPR 
to address at least the second point for now, to uh, uh, inactivate all the 62 copies of the retro virus in a pig. Okay, so uh, how it works is that, oh, you take out the pig cells, because originally they have the retro virus sequences, and then use CRISPR to just cut all the 62 sites. And then after editing, put back into the mother, uh, mother pig, and then they will have a, a offspring that are free from those retroviruses. So they could be a safer uh, uh, um, uh, uh, resources for organs uh, to be transplanted into humans. So of course it is still in uh, t uh, under tests, but there could be potential using this approach uh, to edit or tackle the immune uh, response problem as well. So another uh, uh, potential problem is to end malaria with CRISPR. So that's a question mark here. Um, but it actually was successful in the laboratory. So, um, so of course, the direct way to, to um, tackle malaria is really to, ta uh, to control the mosquito itself because they are the one to pass the diseases, okay? So only female mosquito actually bite humans um, and the infection will be passed on the bitten individual, okay? So a, gene, uh, uh, a system called gene drive was designed in laboratory to make the female, uh, uh, sorry, uh, female mosquitoes un unable to bite. So if you can't, uh, the, the mosquito can't bite, it can spread malaria, right? So what is gene drive? So this is the classic inheritance, all right? So if you have a mother mosquito, uh, uh, a father mosquito, so the offspring will take up one copy from each, similar to human, okay? And then if you uh, intentionally uh, uh, insert a gene or this rubber gene in one mosquito that stop it from biting, then there are 50% chances that the offspring will have this phenotype as well, so they can bite. But the problem here is that in the wild type, there are more, uh, in the, in, I mean, in the nature, there are more wild type. So after several generations, the 50% is not enough. So the gene or the modified phenotype will not spread. So you eventually resulting all wild type. So it doesn't really work because you can't edit every mosquitoes. So what people are proposing is to insert this CRISPR system into the mosquito that can also modify the other copy in the same mosquito, all right? So now in a single mosquito, you have two mutated copies of the DNA. And therefore, after it mates with the other mosquitoes, then there are more chances, more than 50%, they will pass on the progenies. Um, um, or if the efficiency of the CRISPR is very high, then basically you have a 100% chance to pass on this uh, disruptive gene into the population. So after several generations, the mosquito will not be able to bite anymore into the population. Um, so this is an idea. It works in laboratory, and of course, there are a lot of concerns as well. As well. Um, but that at least is an idea on how to uh, end malaria using um, CRISPR. So uh, very quickly uh, on uh, two more applications is that um, we face the problem of lack uh, of antibiotic, uh, uh, antibiotics because of the resistant the bacteria and virus that evolved so quickly and we don't have new chemicals that are synthesized. So one way of using CRISPR, people who believe it, could be to target the evolved sequence. So because we can evolve the CRISPR address so rapidly and so quickly then we may be able to catch up the rate of mutated bacteria or viruses. So that is another idea that uh, uh, the research area have been actively thinking of. And apart from uh, therapy, people also uh, think about diagnostics because uh, like the Zika viruses, there was the outbreak in 201516, um, uh, it's very deadly. But the thing is, it's also asymptomatic. So you gotta have a way to detect it to prevent it. Uh, or, or at least do something afterwards. So people are trying to use CRISPR to recognize specific RNA or DNAs um, that it actually can be put on the filter paper to see, oh, if you have that DNA or RNA, then you show up a signal. So this is one of the other uh, uh, applications that people have been exploring. So there are actually a lot of different possibilities on how CRISPR might be used. It really uh, depends on your creativity and whether you have the passion to work it out. So if you're planning, of, of course, your, uh, your CRISPR experiments to save the world, then you might want to 
consider this. So of course you need to start with a biological questions that you really want to address, okay? And then you want to see, you want to knock out a gene, activate a gene, edit a gene, or repress a gene. And whether you want to scan through the whole genome to look for new things, or you want to target single multiple genes, and then you find the tools. You run the good guaranteed, good uh, uh, Cas9, and do the job. All right. So the last slide here is really to sum up that we have, uh, we believe we do have uh, improved the tools, right? For uh, with CRISPR, we can do a lot of things. But with the great power, of course, we do have great responsibilities. So I think uh, we will definitely go into more details on the ethics size of it, and 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 I think I will pass on to her to introduce more. Yeah.